Vidilink, Olivia Blake. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. The aftermath of the 2008 crisis not only saw weak levels of growth, but a fundamental shift in the character of our labour market. As the economy contracted and people lost their jobs, they were replaced with low pay, zero hour contracts in sectors where workers had far weaker trade union representation. Labour borrowing or spending did not cause an international, international crash to the economy. No, the only organisations that could achieve that are big banks that took huge risks um, on the unregulated global banking um, and did not think about the impact on our communities, but just their profits and bonuses. This false rhetoric about what happened has damaged towns, cities and many communities, leaving councillors with impossible decisions on what services to cut. And I find it a bit insulting to say that, as some members have today, that those in the public sector have been protected from job losses. After 10 years of harsh service cuts, huge workloads and many vacancies in nursing, for example, where there are 40,000 current vacancies, putting a huge strain on the hardworking public sector who do deserve a pay rise. But it is no surprise that the gap between the super rich and poorest continues to grow and things certainly are not all rosy in the private sector. In 2008, 143,000 people were on zero hour contracts. By 2016, it's reached nearly a million. And it's, a, it's been about that level ever since. Not only did in 20, 2008, uh, the crisis force down wages, the insecure working conditions it created made it harder to negotiate pay higher. Adjusted to for inflation, total pay has now, 13 years after the last economic crisis, finally returned to 2008 levels. Today, some of the people most likely not to have been furloughed are those on low pay, zero hour contracts. I was shocked to read in the latest ONS labour market report that the net impact on recent job losses could actually see an increase in average pay of 1.5%. That's... <laughs> purely because the people on the lowest wages are the ones most likely to lose their jobs. And when they don't lose their jobs, many are afraid to go off sick for fear that they won't have their hours renewed or because statutory sick pay they receive simply won't cover their rent and bills and they won't be entitled to statutory sick pay. Low pay and insecurity in our economy has created a perfect storm for transmitting the virus and the government is failing to learn the lessons there is a real human price in their ideology, Mr Deputy Speaker, whether it's children in poverty, food bank queues or homelessness.